Hi, I'm John Mafrano from Boris TV and welcome to Boris Continue Complete for Vegas Pro Training Series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the chroma key tools in Boris Continue Complete. Don't you hate when somebody shows you how to do something and it looks so easy and goes right for them and then you try it and everything goes wrong? Well, chroma key is one of those things. It really depends on how well the key was lit, uh, where your subject was in relation to the screen. I mean, there's lots that can go wrong. And so quite often you'll see somebody do a chroma key demo uh, and it looks so easy and then you try it and, and it's just impossible to do. So what I've done here is taken three pieces of chroma keyed footage that have particular problems that you're likely to run across. Uh, and so I want to show you how to key difficult keys, not just the perfect keys. We'll start with the first one and this one does look like a perfect key. It's well lit background. The subject seems to be uh, fairly far away from the screen so that there's, there's no bleed. But there is some flyaway hairs here that can give us a problem. So let's drop the chroma key around here and see. The chroma key can be found in uh, BCC keys and mats if you've categorized your plugins in Vegas. Uh, and then you go to the BCC chroma key and drop that onto your event. The first thing you want to do is select the color of your background. So we're going to open up this color chooser and because the color chooser can affect the background I like to turn it off and then get the eyedropper and get pretty close to the subject. I want a green that's really close to the subject I'm keying and then I'll turn it back on and we'll see how that chroma key drop things out. So you'll see right away we got a fairly good key. You can see how good a key you have by coming to the output option and going show matte. And we see that the matte is really solid. It's a nice solid white. The blacks are a nice solid black. Seems like we got a good key here. Let's go back to composite and I want to open up this compare here. This is a unique feature uh, to the Boris chroma key and it's really valuable. I'm going to go to the compare mode and I'm going to select side by side comparison. Uh, and there are several ones here. The side-by-side, -side, uh, you can compare with a wipe so we can wipe the background on and off. You can compare it with below so you can wipe what's below on and off. Uh, but I find the side-by-side -side to be the most useful. So now as I look at this side-by-side, -side, I see there are these flyaway hairs that aren't present here. So this key is not as good as I thought it was because I'm losing information. So I'll go back. I'll turn the compare off. And I'm going to go back to my composite mode and say show mat and now let me show you what these these are the three things that you're going to be using the most three controls you'll be using the most uh, density balance and lightness and balance is really a balance between the density and the lightness once you tweak these two the density is how dense this uh, white area is and that's the area that stays when you key it um, and so that's the that's this mask and if I bring it down you'll see that I've got uh, a lot of information bleeding through from the image. So you want to make sure you bring that up until that is solid. Uh, then the lightness controls uh, the lightness and darkness of these areas back here. So I, if I bring the lightness down, you see that blue all the way out to white. And I bring the lightness up. And as I bring the lightness up, you can see the background getting darker and darker. Usually I like this background as dark as I can because I want to make a clean key. But when I do that, I lose some of the hairs. And so for this one, I want to back it off a bit until I can just see those, those hairs. And let's check this on a couple of them. So now I can see those hairs coming through. Um, and let me turn on my background. And we'll go from show matte to composite mode. And now I can see I've got those hairs nicely showing through in my background. Now, to really sell this shot uh, and really get these edges to blend in, I'm going to go and add a light wrap. We do this by using the compositing mode because a light wrap is going to take what's on the track below and wrap it around the edges of the track above. And so we have to composite these two tracks together to do that. So I open my compositing mode and I select custom. And then I see my two to one transforms and in there is BCC light wrap. So I double, double click on that and now I've got BCC light wrap uh, added. Once again, we've got um, a normal mode. We can look at the wrap only uh, or we can look at the wrap on black and look what's happening here. So let's look at normal. We can see we have the blue sky here. We've got some green grass here. We've got some brown trees in here. I'm going to look at the wrap on black and that's exactly what the wrap is doing. You can see it's wrapping the sky around the hair. 
It's wrapping the trees and it's wrapping the grass. So it's really making this person look like they're sitting in that image. You can control the lightness and softness. And, and so let me, let me turn the, the wrap on black to show you these. Uh, you know, we can, we can make this softer. We can change the width. And you can see as I make the width wider, more and more of this is coming in. I'm just going to double click to go back to the defaults. Um, and what's important here is you can change the apply mode. And that's the one that I'm going to change. I'm going to go back and look at it normally. And I, I see there's a little bit of color fringe here. And I really want to get rid of that. So I'm going to go to my apply mode and I'm going to change it from lighten to darken. Look at how natural that looks now that it's on darken. So let's go back to lighten. Notice there's some highlights here on the edge. And then I'll go back to darken and we'll see, wow, blending in really, really nicely. So let's just play this back and see how this looks now. You can see the edges look really nice. Uh, and I can still see some of the uh, some of the hairs uh, on the background. To finish this off, I would do a little bit of color correction because it's kind of obvious this person was uh, indoors, shot with tungsten light. So I'm going to go back and uh, open up my effects, and then go to my plugin manager, uh, and I have my Sony plugins in a little folder here. I'm going to take the Sony color corrector and just drop that on here, and just. Add a little bit of blue, move her over into the into the blues more. I'm going to just show you the difference here, right? See, it just cools her down just a little bit, so she kind of fits a little bit nicer in that scene. Uh, and here's the final scene. Looking pretty nice, looking pretty good. Okay, the next one I want to show you is this one here. Uh, now you may say, you know, this is a pretty even key as well. But the problem with this key is it's a little bit too dark. So watch what happens when I put the um, chroma key on this. I'm going to shut off my background. Uh, so we come to the chroma key. Once again, we'll turn it off. Now you see how that blue is already affecting the key. This is why I like to turn it off. You turn it off, open up the color, uh, get your eyedropper, get a shade of green that's near the subject, and then turn it back on. Now we can see our key. I'll go to show the mat, and we see this mat isn't as clean. So I'm going to go to my density, and you know I'd like to bring this density up and try to get this as white as possible, but then I've got to also bring up the lightness to bring this background down. right? And so now I've got the lightness at 100, I got the density at 100, and there's really nothing in here that's working. Um, you know, I can even change the balance, and the balance isn't going to change the balance between these two enough to make this work. So what I'm going to do is get it close enough. And that seems to be a fairly, um, I've got most of the black here. I've got a little bit of dirtiness uh, over here and up here. And then I'm going to use the mat cleanup to fix this mat. So let me go back uh, and into the composite mode because we want to send the alpha channel to Mac Cleanup. Go to my plugin manager, take Mac Cleanup and drop that on here. Now in the Mac Cleanup, I can change my composite to show Mac, and now I can change the black and white points. So I'm going to start with black and watch this area up here in the corner here. I'm going to start with black and bring the blacks up. And you see that area getting darker, 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 darker. All right? Good. And then I can take the whites, bring the white point down, and watch this area here where we've got some uh, darkness. All right? There. And so the matte cleanup really cleaned up this matte nicely for me. Got the blacks black, got the whites white. Uh, let's go back and look at the composite. And uh, that looks pretty good. Let me turn on my, my backtrack. Now... One of the things that's still going on here is I've got my two-to-one transform, the light wrap, going on. So I want to take the light wrap and unselect it so that it's not affecting my edges while we uh, tweak these edges here. So let's go back and let's go play this. 
Uh, not bad. Well, the fact that it's uh, interlaced video, you're seeing a little bit of interlacing there and the frame rate isn't quite as high as it could be. Um, but we've got a fairly good edge there. And one of the things we can do is use this blend mode to just blend the edge a little bit more, right? So we're doing a little bit more edge blending here. And then of course, if I turn back on um, my light wrap, we'll get even more blending. So that was one where you know, we had a key that we really couldn't get the black and white point to, uh, to work that well. And, and in fact, here's another problem. Lighten actually looks better uh, in this case. And so since you can only have these composite modes uh, with one track one way, what the best thing to do with this was is to create a new track and composite this one separately, right, if I was using this, so that we could use Lighten in the light wrap. But let's take a look at this. So that one's not so bad. It gives you an idea how to deal with those times when you can't get the black and white point exactly perfect. Uh, you can use the cleanup in there, this matte cleanup, and work on your black and white point. Uh, so you'll see now we've got a really nice uh, mask on that one. Okay, let's move to the third one. Now, just so we don't have this problem, I'm gonna insert a video track and uh, move this up a track. So now I don't have that two to one composite uh, happening here. We can look at that cleanly. In this particular one, um, this is a, some footage that I shot when I was doing one of the training DVDs and I only had one light to light the green screen. And so you can see the green screen is very unevenly lit here, but that isn't even a problem for, uh, for Boris chroma key. Let me drop the chroma key on this one, see what we get. Again, we'll go to our color picker. I'll turn it off. And notice right away it was already um, affecting my shirt because I had some blue in my shirt. This is the reason why you want to turn it off. And then I want to get a color close to the subject. And actually, I've got a light and a dark here on the two sides of the subject. I'm going to pick from the dark side. We'll see how that goes. Uh, now I'll turn it back on. Uh, and you can see the, the key's done pretty well here. I'm going to go turn off my background for a moment and it's keyed out the background pretty good. We'll go to our composite and say show the matte, and we see that picking that green uh, point there did fairly well on this side, uh, but there's still some cleanup to be done on the left side here. And so again, we'll go to our density, and I wanna bring that down until I start to see uh, some of the details, and then bring it back up so I get it right at the threshold where there's no more um, garbage in this mat here and then I'll take my lightness I want now I want to get rid of this black here so I'm gonna bring the lightness up uh, and that's gonna bring the black all the way out and I think that made a pretty good key there I got a pretty good mat going on there are some rough edges here now this was DV footage uh, that I shot so one of the things you can do to get rid of when you're working with DV footage but you don't have this so much with uh, with HD and that's why I use DV footage I, I wanted to show this um, let me go back to the composite. You'll see these jagged edges. Sony has a, uh, a plugin called the Chroma Blur, which I like to use. And I'm just going to drop the Chroma Blur on here. You want to blur before you key, so I'm going to move that before the key. And then I'm just going to pick a medium blur. Now watch when I pick the medium blur. Watch these edges here. Medium blur, and the edges smooth out really nicely. Uh, so that's a good thing to put uh, in when you're using DV footage at least, um, to put into your chroma key. So now we've got this keyed fairly nice, but you'll see that there's some, there's some problems here. So I'm going to use another cleanup technique. I'm going to go back to my plugin manager, back to keys and mats, and this time I'm going to take a matte choker and I'm going to drop the matte choker on here. And you'll see immediately the matte choker kind of clean that up, but sometimes it chokes down a little too much. What a matte choker does um, is it makes the mat smaller. It chokes down on the mat. So let me bring it out so you can see what's going on here. Uh, that's how it was before. And then I'm going to raise the mat choker up and just so it takes that out. And then I'm going to add a bit of a blur just to blur the edge a bit. So I've just used a little bit of blur and a little bit of choke on that one. Uh, and now I'll go back and turn on my background. So you can see how this looks on the background. And I'm going to move it back down to the track where it's going to use the light wrap and that just look how that light wrap soften those edges there's a hard edge here 
and then I moved it down on that track and it just wrapped around and, and again you know the light wrap is such a great way of selling the fact that the person really is in the picture so you would almost think that that this in the background let me show this background uh, that this background was being projected behind me because as you look and I'll stop it there you can see the blue uh, on the edge of my shirt from the background right and the blue around me so using that light wrap really helps sell the fact that the talent is really in the shot. Well, that about wraps it up. I just wanted to quickly show you how to use the chroma key tools that are in BCC7. Kind of use them in some situations where they don't work perfectly and you have to put two or three of them together to get the effect that you want. If you need more information, drop by BorisEffects.com. This is John Rafrano for Boris TV. Until next time, thanks for watching.